Hey guys, how are you? I hope you all are doing great. So as you see in the thumbnail, we are gonna see what if Naruto and Benalana were couples. This is part 6. And if you want more then please leave a like, share with your friend and let's get in the video. And don't forget to put your headphone. Pacing from side to side in the middle of his apartment, Giorno had a rather annoyed expression as he held his cell phone close to his face. His pacing only grew faster and faster as the phone continued to ring. However, the oldest of the Uzumaki children instantly stopped dead in his tracks the moment the other end picked up. Good morning, brother. The surprisingly annoyed voice of Asia spoke up. Is there something I can help you with? Turning to the half-naked woman sitting at his small dining table, Giorno watched a woman slowly wave her fingers at him before giggling to herself. This is your doing, isn't it? Well, I'd love to take credit for whatever you're insinuating, but I must be honest, brother. I haven't the slightest clue as to what you're talking about. So you're not responsible for the half-naked woman with cat ears in my apartment. There was a small chuckle on the other end from Asia. No I'm afraid I'm not the mastermind behind whatever is going on with you. Though it does sound like my handiwork, so I'll forgive your accusations. By chance did you ask your little friend who she is or why she is in your apartment? No, I didn't. I just assumed you were behind my current problem. Asia groaned on the other end. Listen Giorno I'm not responsible for everything going on in your life and some of us have actual problems. Did you know daddy had two beautiful women in his bed last night and he didn't have sex with either of them? Instead he stayed up all night working out and avoiding the situation. I swear that old man is giving me more trouble than I first thought. It sounds to me like you're the one causing father problems. The older of the two pointed out. Perhaps he isn't looking for a relationship. Nonsense, I can sense daddy's emotions after all. So I know he is heavily interested in both Griselda and Benalana, but daddy being who he is has made things challenging. Giorno sighed. Can your older brother give you some advice? Nope don't need any. You just go have fun with your naked cat lady friend. Asia chirped happily before hanging up on her older brother. That little brat. Giorno mumbled with a twitch in his eye. Little sisters sure are a handful aren't they? The woman asked with a slight giggle, which earned Giorno's full attention. You have no idea, but if you're not one of my sister's little schemes then tell me. Who are you and what are your intentions? Well for starters, the name is Kuroka, and my intentions were to simply check in on my little sister. The now named Kuroka shared, which caused Girono to fold his arms. And how does any of that involve you masquerading as a cat and living in my apartment? Not much of it at all. Kuroka replied. Then tell me why I shouldn't just throw you out right now. Because if you do I will just sneak back in and follow you around, but I'll admit that at first I came to this town to check on my little sister. However, I ran into you and I was instantly encapsulated by the sheer aura of power that you hold. Not to mention how I learned all sorts of interesting things about you and the passion when I pretended to be a cat. So I'm even more invested in you than ever. Giorno kept a calm expression and folded his arms. What are you and why are you so keen on staying near me? Well I'm a Nekashu who was turned into a devil and I'm simply interested in you because you could produce strong kittens. Kuroka revealed without shame or deceit behind her voice. If you're a devil who is your master? The blonde asked as he ignored the idea of having children with a woman. I have no master, I killed the devil that reincarnated me. Kuroka revealed to an unmoved Giorno. So you're a straight devil. Of sorts. However, I'm strong enough to retain my sanity without a master, but are you not going to ask why I killed my former master? I would be lying if I said I wasn't curious. If you're capable of killing your own master then you're dangerous and I will have to dispose of you. Well my former master wasn't a good man even for devil standards. He was abusive, manipulative and evil. However, the tipping point was when he tried to experiment on my little sister Sheeran to create a stronger devil. I lashed out and killed him, which labeled me as an SS class criminal in the underworld and my sister got placed under a new devil. I don't regret my actions, but I do miss my sister and that's why I sneak around and check on her from time to time. After all, our relationship now is a little complicated. That's an interesting story and it doesn't appear like you're lying either, as I'm rather good at reading people. You also don't seem to pose any threat to me or my organization, so I won't kill you. Hiroka smirked and bit the top of her lip. Well aren't you just a little charmer. However, if you're telling the truth you're a wanted criminal and that could be a problem. Only if you let it be a problem. Because like I said I'm here to stay and I won't take no for an answer. Giorno frowned as he looked at the devil at his table, he could easily dispose of her. However, he had a sudden idea that made him smirk. Well if you're insisting on staying you'll be working under me and will listen to what I say. Giorno began as he knew it would be easier to turn the woman into an asset rather than have her energy be focused on pestering him. Is that understood? Absolutely, I love a man who takes charge. We'll make so many beautiful and strong kittens together Naya. 
Giorno's eye twitched in annoyance, as he knew he was stuck with the woman for the foreseeable future. Though he at least hoped she would never meet his younger sister, as that would be the end of him. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Train to the Underworld. Asia was slowly walking back to the seats that contained all her traveling companions, while at the same time placing her phone into her pocket. This of course caused Naruto who was sitting in between Griselda and Benelana to lift his brow. Who was on the phone sweetie? Beja rolled her eyes and frowned before taking a seat across her father by Rias. It was Giorno who accused me of some nefarious plot involving a half-naked catwoman. Naruto looked confused and leaned forward sheepishly. Well were you behind it? Daddy. Don't go off blaming me too. I'm innocent. Asia replied back, which made Naruto nod his head and back away. I'm sorry sweetie I believe you, but you do have a track record with those kind of things. Asia scowled at her father with a hard gaze, which made the man grin nervously in response. However, Venelana quickly broke the tension by patting the man's thigh and laughing. That she does. After all, I've seen her pranks firsthand. Like that little gen whatever trick you did on Griselda last night. The matriarch of the Gremory household revealed, which made Naruto's jaw drop. You put Griselda under a Jinjutsu. Asia why would you do that? Yes Asia, why would you do that? Griselda asked with a slight smirk, as she finally had something to hold over the girl. I mean placing me under a Jinjutsu is highly inappropriate behavior and calls for punishment. Wouldn't you agree Naruto? Naruto frowned and remembered his early conversation with Karama, thinking to himself maybe he should try some more tough parenting, or at least have Griselda help him. Possibly, but I want to hear why Asia placed you under a Jinjutsu in the first place. Griselda had a large grin on her face, and even Venelana was quite pleased as well. Considering both women had planned this to start getting more control over Asia during their conquest to form a relationship with Naruto. So they both waited silently for Asia to admit to what she had done and for the consequences to follow. Oh that's easy daddy. Asia began quickly with bubbly enthusiasm that caught Griselda and Venelana off guard. You see Griselda and Venelana started to argue after you left and I was afraid it would escalate badly without you around. So I used a simple Jinjutsu on Griselda and asked Venelana to go upstairs and talk with you to calm herself, since I know you're so good with talking to people. I'm sorry if I did something wrong, I was just trying to salvage a bad situation. You could even ask anyone that was there, and they would tell you that something needed to be done. Beja is right dad. Zenobia called out from the adjacent booth of seats, which got the man's attention. Lady Gremory and Mom were practically at each other's throats till Asia stepped in and stopped the situation from getting out of hand. Griselda is this true? Naruto asked softly, as the angel had a rather nervous look. Well I mean yes, but it wasn't that bad. The angel admitted, as it was against her angelic genetics to lie to the man she cared for. An action that caused Benelana to sigh in defeat. I'm sure we could have come to a peaceful ending without Asia's intervention. It was only a small argument after all. I doubt that. Asia replied sternly, as she locked eyes with the woman. I can sense emotions after all Griselda, and I could tell you and Venelana were only getting more and more aggressive with each other. I did what was necessary and nothing more. The two women were at a loss for words, while Naruto quickly waved his hand in the air and gave his daughter an apologetic look. Oh I understand you were just trying to keep the peace. In that case I'm very proud of you sweetie. Asia giggled happily and gave her father an eye smile. Thanks, I try to be a keeper of peace just like you daddy. Naruto grinned ear to ear at his daughter's declaration, as Asia knew all the right buttons to press with her father. Asia if I may ask. Akeno spoke up from her seat by Zenobia. Just how powerful is that ability you used on Griselda? I mean to stop an angel with a glance is a frightening ability. Surely with something so powerful defeating Riser would be easy. The I really take that douch down a few pegs. Kaneko added in from her seat across a say. Asia laughed and folded her hands over her lap. Well Jinjutsu is a ninja art from my daddy's dimension, where the user extends their chakra flow through the cerebral nervous system of their opponent to cause a disruption in their five senses. In my case I use my eyes to trap my victims in a Jinjutsu. Now there are a multitude of ways to break a Jinjutsu. For example, one way is to use your own chakra to disrupt the Jinjutsu and break the illusion. However, beings from this dimension like Griselda typically don't have chakra or are trained to use what they do have. So that option is off the table, but there is another option. That being the infliction of any sort of pain self-inflicted or not can break the Jinjutsu. Naruto nodded his head and had a rather serious expression. Another counter is special eyes like the ones I and Asia both have. 
so there is a possibility of someone from this dimension having some magical or genetically modified eye to counter Jinjutsu. Or maybe even some other magical power source that can counter illusions. That's a good point, but to answer your question Akeno I could use my eyes on Riser. Unfortunately there are three slight issues. First I need close direct eye contact to cast my Jinjutsu over my opponent. Meaning I have to get rather close to Riser and hope he doesn't avoid eye contact with me. Then secondly any attack I use on Riser that isn't a one-shot move would just snap him out of the Jinjutsu. But with my holy sword one attack is all we need. Zenobia spoke up, which made Asia sigh with a slight nod. Yes, but that brings me to my third and final point. I'm still a novice in Jinjutsu compared to people from Daddy's dimension. So I can only cast and hold a Jinjutsu on a single person at a time. Meaning in a battle format with multiple opponents, I won't be able to easily lock down Riser if his peerage interferes with me. Naruto nodded and folded his arms. Which is exactly why once we set up the rating game you will be under some serious training from me and Karama. What kind of training are you thinking? Asia asked with a skeptical eye. Well obviously you have taken a liking to Jinjutsu and Fuinjutsu. So you will be focused on improving yourself in those arts, along with basic speed, strength and chakra control training. Zenobia on the other hand has only been trained with swords, so I will focus on teaching her chakra control, along with hopefully a few lower rank justice. Then Issei will of course be getting about the same form of training as Zenobia, but also have more focus on his sacred gear's abilities. Finally me and Karama will run some team exercises with you three to prepare you for the raiding game. Sounds like a solid plan daddy, but shouldn't I also be training my Sharingan as well? Asia asked curiously, which earned a huff from Karama. The latter of whom was in the booth behind Asia and Rias. The hell with the Sharingan, it's a curse on this world that you got those damned eyes in the first place. Asia giggled and turned around to look at the fox behind her. You don't like the Sharingan simply because Madara and Abito both controlled you against your will. You don't have to hate the Sharingan so much now since only me and daddy have them. If anything that's more reason to hate those blasted eyes. Naruto's an idiot and I don't worry about him, but you're more cunning and resourceful than either of the damned Ichiha were. Oh Karama you're so sweet with your compliments, but don't worry I'll never use my Sharingan to control you against your will. I will however place you in a bunch of funny Jinjutsus when I get bored. Karama's eyes twitched in annoyance. I hope you get the Manjikam and go blind. Asia giggled and looked down at the fox with her Sharingan activated. Well between daddy's genetics that extends my life to rival that of a devil's I also have my twilight healing. So even if I were to obtain my Manjikam I doubt I would ever go blind. Plus with daddy being an Uzumaki with Senju genetics, there is a strong chance that my eyes will eventually become the Rinnegan. Well lucky you brat. Karama grumbled in annoyance. Smirking and reverting her eyes to their natural green color, Asia flipped back around and took her seat. Anyways what do you say daddy? Can we work on my Sharingan too? We can try, but I'm no expert with the Sharingan especially with using it with Yinjutsu. However, it is one of your best defensive weapons so I'll do all I can. That will be fine. Asia replied back with a smile. Naruto nodded and looked over to Zenobia and Issei. I hope the training regiment I described is okay with both of you as well. If you have any questions or areas you wish to work on we can make adjustments accordingly. I'm perfectly fine with what you have for me dad and I promise to work hard to make you proud. Zenobia declared softly, which made the man smile. Yeah we trust your judgment dad and we will work super hard so we can kick the Dreiser jerk's ass. Issei added in. Good, but if you will excuse me. Naruto then slowly pushed his way up and away from the two women he was sitting with. I need to go use the restroom. Asia watched her father slowly walk away with a friendly smile, but the moment the man disappeared into another train car to find a bathroom her demeanor shifted. Gone was her bright and friendly smile, as now the girl had a rather mischievous and downright dangerous grin directed at Griselda and Venelana. So mummies to be. Asia began with a low laugh behind her voice, while her eyes looked over both women carefully. I see you're trying to go against me. Perhaps, is that a problem? Venelana asked softly, while giving the girl a rather challenging devilish smirk. Asia merely giggled and gave the woman an eye smile. Not in the slightest mommy. It actually sounds like a lot of fun. Though I'm surprised Griselda, I didn't cut you for the rebellious type. I always took you for a loyal by the book angel. Well it looks like you don't know as much as you think. Griselda replied firmly, while she crossed her arms over her chest. Trying her absolute hardest to keep her strong and commanding composure from slipping. Not everyone bends to your wishes and you will be punished daughter to be. Couldn't have said it better myself. Venelana added in. Asia's green eyes were practically glowing with anticipation, and her smile only grew. Oh this is getting rather exciting. Zenobia make a reminder for me to make some extra fun plans for these two. Understood. 
the blue-haired teen replied before typing on a small tablet. Anything in particular you want me to note down? Asia shook her head. Nah I let the suspense build for a little while. Unless my new big sister has anything to add. Having Asia's mischievous eyes directed at her, Ria's looked slightly nervous. Um nothing as of now. That's okay. It's better to leave the planning to me anyhow. Asia giggled before leaning her head onto the crimson-haired devil's shoulder. After all, I don't want my big sister to worry about anything except spoiling her baby sister. Then Alana looked at her blushing daughter with an interested gaze. So you've turned my own flesh and blood to your side already. You sure work fast, I'm impressed. Griselda folded her arms and looked to her own daughter, the latter of whom was shooting daggers through her eyes at Rias. Asia does have a way of getting people on her side. I mean my own daughter has become her personal assistant and partner in crime. Keeping her head resting on Rias, Asia merely giggled. Well Zenovia is the best right-hand woman anyone could ask for, and she treats me so well. Despite her strength and my peerage being lower than some she is without a doubt my second in command. I'm always happy to serve you Asia. Zenovia declared with a respectful bow of her head. And your words mean so much thank you. Hey I'm happy to serve you too Lady Asia. Issei shouted eagerly, while the teen pointed to himself with a smile. You've not only saved my life, but made it a million times more awesome. I'm forever in your debt. This might be the longest I've seen you go without talking about boobs. Kaneko noted in a rather surprised voice. I don't know if I should be impressed by the influence she has on you or to be afraid of it. I'm starting to ask myself that same question Kaneko. Akeno added in as she looked to her king. The latter of whom was at the mercy of the blonde by her side. What about you president? Well I'm certainly not afraid of her. Rias replied sternly, while Laisha suddenly wrapped her arms around the girl and squeezed tightly. That's so good to hear. I would be sad if my new big sister was scared of me for no reason. Asia chirped happily, while Karama scoffed in response. No reason. Please your father's village feared me as a demon and a walking disaster. However, if they were to meet you, I'm sure you would inflict more fear and terror than I ever did. Karama declared softly, which caused Asia to pout. Karama you've been a naughty fox lately, but don't worry I'll fix that soon enough. And that's the shit I'm talking about. Shall I move Karama's surprise up in the schedule? Zenobia asked in a nonchalant tone, while Laisha merely nodded. Yeah might as well. Oh that's a rough one Lord Karama. Issei added in, which caused the fox to perk up with wide eyes. Just what are you planning Brad? And why does the pervert know? So my two little rebellious mommies, back to you. Asia began, as she completely ignored the fox. I hope you know what you're getting into. Asia. I'm not one to back down or hold back. He I get that from my daddy after all. Asia continued on, while both women watched Karama fall out of his sea tent stand right beside Asia, with sweat dripping down his body. I'm sorry I called you a brat we can make up. You love your sweet fluffy Karama. After all, I may not look like much. Anakin Karama forcibly placed his jaw onto Asia's lap like some common house pet begging for attention and forgiveness. We can even work together to prank your idiot dad and these women. Remember how much fun we have doing that. Asia merely smirked and ruffled Karama's head. But you should ask yourself. If I can take a demon fox that left entire nations shaking in fear and reduce him to this. Asia then glanced back to the women with a way too friendly eye smile. Just what are the limitations of what I could do to you? Griselda and Benalana both froze in place as they watched a seemingly innocent girl scratch the top of Karama's head. Realizing that they had stepped into a dangerous war zone with an absolute master manipulator. The war where they would either have a satisfactory outcome or an absolutely devastating defeat. Either way it was too late to back down, as at this point it was them versus Asia and everyone else. However, neither woman was going to give up at this point. We won't buckle that easy Asia. Trust me you'll be a good little daughter under our control soon enough. Venelana spoke up, while a small amount of conviction to which Griselda agreed with. Asia on the other hand merely smiled wide. In that case let the game begin mommies. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Surprised to find a severe lack of servants within the grounds of the household. This of course caused Asia to tilt her head in confusion. For such a large territory you're surprisingly lacking the amount of help I figured you would have. Asia began in a matter-of-fact tone. Rias nodded. My brother's queen normally oversees the household, but she is currently helping my brother in the underworld capital. 
I'm sure you'll see her along with my brother during your time here however. Well I look forward to meeting them both and I must thank you for allowing us to stay here as well. Asia replied, which caused Naruto to nod in agreement. There is no need for thanks, but we have plenty of room inside of our humble little home. So feel free to take any open room for yourselves during your stay. Then Alana began in a friendly voice, while winking at Naruto. Well expect for you Naruto. Unfortunately you'll have to bunk with me. Naruto blushed slightly, as he wasn't one to get openly nervous around women. However, he was always embarrassed whenever his kids were around to see him being flirted with. So coughing into his hand and clearing his throat, Naruto tried to keep a calm composure. Very well, but is there an open training ground? I would like to start the children's training as soon as possible. Naruto explained, which made Benalana nod. Yes we have plenty of open spaces for training of all types, but we should focus more on the matter at hand. Considering we only have under an hour before we must meet with Lord Phoenix and Riser. Naruto grinned and created a few shadow clones by his side. Well I plan to have my clones train Zenobia and Issei in my absence while Griselda watches over them. Little bit of multitasking. That's smart, especially since having an angel wandering around the underworld isn't the best idea. Ria's why don't you have your peerage show our guests around since they won't be needed at our meeting either. Ria's nodded and looked to her queen. Could you show them to a training area? Of course president. I'd even be happy to spar with them a little. I could have a lot of fun with little Issei after all. Shivering by the girl's tone and look, Issei turned to the original Naruto. Dad don't leave me alone. Laughing and slapping the boy's back, Naruto grinned wide. Don't worry you'll have my clones with you, but. The man suddenly grew a rather mischievous smirk. After my training sessions you'll be begging for me to leave you alone. Wait, what does that mean? Issei yelled loudly. Who cares let's just get a move on it already. Zenobia grumbled as she started to push Issei away. Asia giggled and waved her peerage members off. Have fun you too. Don't train too hard now. Griselda makes sure they don't slack off. Naruto ordered with a light laugh, which caused the angel to bow. I'll keep them working hard. The woman replied before she walked off with the devils and kids. Naruto grinned ear to ear and noticed he was now left with Asia, Kurama, Venelana and Rias. Well shall we go get our meeting over with? Not yet. There is still a rather important matter that we have to talk about. Venelana began softly while she folded her arms and looked at Naruto. Lord Phoenix is a very prestigious devil and as such would like speaking with a human. I would assume he would most likely refuse any type of offer or challenge you extend. That could be an issue, but I'm sure I'll get through to him. Naruto replied with his normal trademark enthusiasm, but Rias merely dropped her head sadly. I think you're giving too much credit to Lord Phoenix. I know the man and what my mother is saying will definitely happen. That's okay. Asia chimed in happily, which caused everyone to look at the scheming girl. It's a simple fix really. All Venelana has to do is claim daddy as her husband before Lord Grimmery. Even if it's a lie and daddy is still a human, having the head of the Grimmery household declare daddy as her new husband and current head of the house would hold enough power to make any devil listen. That's a good plan Asia, I should just come to you for future ideas from now on. Venelana commented as she leaned forward and grabbed onto Naruto's arm. You're okay with the plan as well husband. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. I'm not one for lying and deceit, but it's a good idea. Of course it's a good idea. It's mine after all. Asia chirped in an upbeat voice. But let's not wait around anymore. Let's stop this marriage. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Phoenix Territory. Being led by a servant of the Phoenix family through the rather large Phoenix family estate. Naruto along with Benalana, Asia, Rias and Kurama all walked without being impressed by any of the expensive furniture or extravagance of the devil household. Considering each one of them was either accustomed to such lifestyles or just didn't care for such things. Naruto being in the lead walking with Benalana to his side, casually peered over his shoulder. Finding Asia walking with a rather calm expression, but Rias on the other hand seemed quite nervous and upset as she walked with her head down. Her cup Rias. Naruto began with a light-hearted laugh while flashing the crimson-haired girl a smirk. There is no need to be nervous or afraid as long as I'm here. Then Alana smiled at the man and Asia leaned into Rias. Yeah listen to daddy Rias, you're so tense I don't even have to use emotion sensing to tell what you're feeling. My apologies, I just can't help but be nervous about this whole thing and I especially don't want to be anywhere near Riser. Well from what you've shared I wouldn't want to be around him either. Asia replied simply. Naruto grinned and placed his hands behind his head. 
well that asshole is going to know his place soon enough. So just enjoy yourself a little Riaz, I promise everything is going to be okay. Riaz nodded. I trust you. Then Alana smiled at her daughter's comment and reached out to sling her arm around Naruto's bicep. As do I. Well I for one can't wait to get this over with. Kurama grumbled in a low voice as he stalked behind everyone else. Beja giggled and looked back to the fox. Oh don't be such a sourpuss Kurama. Besides it's better having Riser being the focal point of me and my daddy's schemes than you. I won't argue that. The nine-tailed fox replied in a dry voice. So on second thought really drag this out. Pee we plan too. Asia and Naruto declared in perfect sync while the group suddenly stopped before a large door. Lord Phoenix and his son are awaiting your arrival. The servant explained while taking a bow and opening the door. Wasting no time on formalities or introductions, Naruto quickly walked into the private study of Lord Phoenix. Who was seated at his desk while who Naruto could only assume was Riser was standing by the man's side. Considering both father and son had very similar features and body types while also appearing more akin to brothers. However, the latter was due to devil genetics making Lord Phoenix appear much younger than he was. Then Alana and Riaz it's wonderful to see you both. Though I'm afraid I'm not familiar with your companions. Lord Phoenix began in a friendly tone while Riser cocked a smug grin directed at Riaz. Who cares about them when my beloved is finally here to talk about our marriage? Riser began while the man slowly inched forward towards Riaz. Riaz retracted backwards but before the devil could even get close to her position. Riser was stopped by Naruto, who held his hand out to block the devil from advancing. Now you're being quite rude. Naruto chuckled in a light-hearted tone. I'll be whatever I want you dot dot dot. Naruto laughed as he rested a hand onto Riser's shoulder and gripped tightly. An action that made the devil tense up and drop onto his knees in pain. What was that? Naruto asked smugly while he released the devil. And what's the matter? Did you drop a coin perhaps? You bastard. Riser growled in a low voice while nursing his shoulder with his opposing hand. You'll pay for that. Naruto merely rolled his eyes and walked past Riser without sparing the man another glance and instead directed his full attention to the patriarch of the Phoenix household. Anyways Lord Phoenix my name is Naruto Uzumaki and I'm here to inform you of your two options. The man from another dimension began softly while slowly taking a seat in a chair across Lord Phoenix. Either agree to dissolve the marriage contract between your son and Rias right now, or I'll invoke the right to challenge this marriage through a rating game. Lord Phoenix gritted his teeth and glared at Naruto with pure anger. Who do you think you are to dwell in affairs that do not concern you? This is between the Phoenix and Gremory households. You have no claim or right to even be speaking of such affairs. Just who are you anyway? I've never heard of the Yuzumaki before are you more of the Gremory's pet servants? Naruto laughed casually and waved the man off as he was unmoved from his insult. No I'm just a simple human here to see justice done on the behalf of Rhea's Gremory. A human. Lord Phoenix began before looking straight to Venelana. Have the Gremories really fallen so low since the death of Ziodicus that they have humans speak for them? Though I can't deny I didn't see this coming. I always knew you would run the good name of the Gremory household into the ground without your husband. Asia frowned and contemplated speaking up, even Rhea's was furious with the man's words directed at her mother. Though before either girl could speak Venelana's laughter caused them to look at the woman, as like Naruto, she wasn't phased by the man's insults. Your words are quite harsh Lord Phoenix, but yes Naruto is a human and does speak on behalf of me and my family. Venelana declared in a matter-of-fact tone. Lord Phoenix scoffed and made a face of disgust. Well unfortunately for you Venelana this human has no right to speak in devil affairs, as this agreement is only between people of the Phoenix and Gremory family. So I will not dissolve this marriage, nor will I accept any rating game challenges, but. The man stopped for a moment and grinned at Venelana while his eyes looked the woman up and down. If you were to agree to become my wife and give me the power of the Gremory territory. Well then I might be inclined to free Rias from her contract. Father you wouldn't. Riser yelled in anger directed at the man. Silence Riser, I am the head of this household and do as I please. Lord Phoenix replied sternly, which made the devil grit his teeth and look away. Well that is quite the bargain, but you overlooked one simple thing. Venelana began with confidence while the woman walked forward and stopped behind Naruto. Then with a devilish smirk, she draped herself over the man and kept her full focus on Naruto as she spoke. When I said Naruto speaks for my family he isn't speaking as an outsider. He's speaking as my husband and the father of Rias. So I absolutely won't be marrying you and you will accept my husband's challenge. Delay with humans how disgusting you wretched dot dot dot. That's enough. Naruto cut in with power and authority as he could feel Venelana melt further into her embrace from his tone. You can insult me, spit on me and do whatever, and I'll laugh it off. 
I've grown accustomed to such treatment, but disrespect or harm anyone I care for will be the last mistake you make. Lord Phoenix sucked in his teeth and trembled, as the amount of killing intent rolling off Naruto was enough to keep the devil silent. So let's make this understandable Lord Phoenix, there will be a rating game between your Sunriser and my champion. Where the winner decides the fate of Rhea's Gremory. Am I understood? Feeling the overbearing pressure being lifted off of him, Lord Phoenix merely nodded. Fine, but my son will defeat any champion you pick. Naruto grinned and looked over his shoulder. Asia why don't you introduce yourself? Biggling and skipping forward, Asia stopped by her father's side and was bouncing in excitement. Hey Lord Fried Chicken. My name is Asia Uzumaki, and I'm the one who's gonna fight your son in a rating game. This little brat. Riser shouted loudly while he pointed at Asia before laughing. I'd kill her, but whatever I'll fight her. Lord Phoenix couldn't help but to agree with his son's declaration and had faith Riser would win and keep the contract in their favor. I accept you as the challenger and approve of this rating game. Good. Naruto began in a calm voice while he held his hand to Asia. The rating game will be set for two weeks. Make sure to gather a large audience, as it will be quite the spectacle to see my baby girl man handle your son and his peerage. I'll start making preparations immediately. Lord Phoenix replied as his confidence was slowly growing. Fully believing that Riser would beat Asia without trouble. And you should get funeral plans ready for when I fucking murder your bitch daughter. Riser yelled loudly, which made Naruto tense up and his hair overshadow his eyes. However, the soft touch of his daughter's hand and her laugh instantly calmed his building rage. Can I have fun with my new toy daddy? Asia asked with a slight giggle, which made Naruto smile. Go ahead princess. Just don't break him right away. Naruto replied simply, which made Asia purr cup and skip directly over to Riser. The latter of whom glared at the smiling girl. Got something to say bit dot 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 Riser began, but went completely silent and his eyes were full and lifeless. Almost as if he was looking forward in a trance-like state. Lord Phoenix was stunned by his son's current state while the two Grimmery began to suspect what was happening. Naruto on the other hand sighed and looked at the back of Asia's head. Really princess? You're showing him the ace up your sleeve already? Turning around to look at her father, Asia smiled and showed the man her Sharingan in all its glory. No I'm just giving fried chicken JR. A reason to be afraid of me. Break the Jinjutsu or I will. Naruto replied sternly, which made Asia blow some air from her lips. Fine. The girl mumbled while she made a small hand sign. Release. Ah fuck. Riser screamed in terror before falling onto his backside and crawling backward so fast he slammed into his father's desk. Then with sheer terror he began to tremble and look at the small giggling girl. What did you do to him? Lord Phoenix asked loudly. More like what did you show him? Kurama added in nervously as he watched Riser shake in fear. I already said. Asia began in a low hollow voice as she tilted her head and looked at the devil. I gave him a reason to be afraid of me. I hope I didn't break him already. I want to have more fun with him in our rating game. Lord Phoenix was speechless as all his confidence from earlier was gone. Meanwhile Rias looked at the terrified Riser with a pleased expression as she never imagined seeing the devil in such a state. We'll see you in two weeks. Naruto began in an upbeat voice as he stood up and began to walk off. Let's go back to the Gremory territory everyone. Take care Lord Phoenix. Then Alana giggled softly as she held onto Naruto's arm and walked away with the man. He see you later fried chicken junior. Asia giggled as she walked away with both Rias and Karama. Leaving behind two nervous and terrified devils. An annoyed expression covering his face, Naruto stood in the middle of the hallway within the Gremory mansion with nothing on except for a pair of black trousers. It had been one week since Naruto started to prepare Asia, Issei and Zenobia for their raiding game and every day proved to be more challenging than the last. So of course today was no different. Asia. Naruto bellowed out loudly while he waited with his arms crossed. Yet as the man stood in silence with no answer, he closed his eyes and grinded his teeth. Perhaps she didn't hear you? There was a small ruffling sound followed by the sound of something swinging in the air. Either that or she is off causing more mischief. Naruto's eyes twitched and he didn't say anything. Well the mansion and surrounding property is fairly large Griselda. So who knows where she could be. Taking a deep sigh, Naruto opened his eyes and looked up. Where he saw both Venelana and Griselda completely naked and tied together in a net that was keeping the two bound tightly together, while a small note was attached to the net that simply read. Good morning daddy, I have plans today. Have fun without me. Your princesses. How does she even have time to do all this? Naruto mumbled softly as he had to admit his daughter was incredibly efficient with her schemes. And a better question, how did she get you both into this situation? She is quite cunning. Then Alana began before wiggling her body a little, which made the net swing. However, would you please let us down? 
Naruto looked at the two women with a blank face. You're literally an angel and a devil, can you really not get yourself out of a simple net trap made by a 17-year-old? Then Alana who had signs of clear alternative motives, merely made a helpless face. Now Naruto you wouldn't leave your poor wife up here. Naruto's fingers twitched slightly. But we aren't actually married dot dot dot. And don't forget Asia is your daughter, as her enabler you must take responsibility for her actions. Naruto sighed. You have a point. The man began softly as he reached upwards and carefully began to lower the two women. However, as Naruto stood underneath the women, Venelana got a devilish glint in her eyes and the net completely snapped. Causing Venelana to fall chest first into Naruto's face and knocking him onto his back. Meanwhile Griselda managed to land on top of Naruto's stomach and knock the air from his lungs. Oh my hero. Venelana whispered softly while firmly pressing her breasts into Naruto's face. I think you deserve a reward. Or maybe a punishment for what his daughter did. Griselda proposed in a low voice while she poked her head over Venelana's shoulder. Naruto's eyes grew wide as he was completely pinned under the angel and devil. Both of whom were giving him a rather hard and heated passionate gaze. Leading Naruto to the mindset of where this situation was quickly spiraling into. A situation he in all honesty didn't mind at all, especially if his children weren't around to make the situation awkward. Yet as Naruto pondered on just going with the flow, he should have kept two things in mind. The first was that his life was full of complications, while the second that his daughter would always have some sort of alternative motive or scheme in play. The cruel truth that was quickly brought to Naruto's attention by a sudden voice. God damn dad you're an inspiration. Issei yelled loudly, which made Naruto snap his eyes towards the boy. Noticing the young brunette gazing at him with stars in his eyes. Though it was almost impossible for Naruto to properly see the boy as Venelana was blocking a majority of his sight with her breasts. Yet Naruto was still able to get some mumbled words out. Issei what are you doing? Holding his hands up in defense, Issei kept his eyes directly on the two naked women. Lady Asia told me she and Zenobia were busy today, so I was going to train alone with you. Well this is somewhat of a mood killer. Venelana mumbled softly while she slowly released her hold on Naruto and stood to her feet. Come on Griselda, let's leave the boys alone. We can play with my husband later. Adding Naruto's bare chest and giving a small wink, Griselda joined Venelana before walking off. Though as the devil and angel disappeared down the hallway, Issei slowly approached the older man with a sheepish expression. A sorry dad that was a total cock block on my part. The perverted brunette began as he nervously rubbed the back of his head while Naruto merely took a moment to gather himself. It's fine to say, we have more important issues to deal with. Naruto then stood to his feet and began to stretch. Are you ready to start some more training? Humping his fist in excitement, Issei merely nodded. Hell yeah dad. Well since Asia and the others decided to skip out to do who knows what today. Me and you can focus on some hardcore personal training. Slightly twitching, Issei backed away a few steps and gave Naruto a nervous laugh. Dad I thought we have been doing hardcore training. Naruto chuckled and slapped the pervert on the arm, which made him stagger to the side. Not in the slightest, but now since you've learned how to mold chakra and make shadow clones. We are going to abuse the fact that you now have my genetics and train with as many shadow clones as you can muster. Issei gulped. What exactly are you going to teach me? Oh just a few things, nothing to worry about. Naruto began with a smirk while the blonde began to walk off. But after I'm done you'll be an entirely different person. Running to Naruto's side, Issei looked up to the man he idolized. Will I be like your apprentice? Naruto glanced at the boy with a soft laugh. You know I trained Giorno, but I never really made him my apprentice. Though I feel like it's time I should take on an official apprentice, so why not? Awesome. Issei roared loudly while holding his fists high into the air. I'm one step closer to my new dream then. Oh really? And what would that be? Naruto asked but was about to regret doing so. Well dad I can't be the harem king because you're quickly taking that title for yourself. Naruto's eyes twitched. Issei I dot dot dot. But that's okay because as your son I shall follow in your footsteps and become the harem prince. Taking a deep sigh, Naruto didn't say anything and just kept walking while the giddy Issei followed close behind. With Giorno. Having his eyes closed in frustration, Giorno merely sat in the silence of his chair while a rather loud purring noise was filling his personal office. This was a result of Kuroka, who was currently seated on Giorno's lap in her human form. Meanwhile Bruno was standing before the two with a rather perplexed look. So dot dot dot. Don't. Say. Anything. Giorno cut in sharply, which made Bruno hold his hands up and laugh. And before you even think about it, no Asia isn't behind this. Or at least I think she isn't. I wasn't going to, but are you at least going to introduce me to your little friend? Giorno sighed. This is Kuroka and Kuroka this is my closest friend and ally. Bruno Bichairati. 
Bruno began, while taking a slight bow of respect. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Oh I like this one darling, he's very polite and dashing. Kuroka began as she nuzzled her body into Giorno's. Displaying the woman's attachment to the blonde for Bruno to see. Darling. Bruno repeated with a slight chuckle, which made the blonde's eyes twitch. Thus tell me why you're here. Giorno ordered sternly, which of course made Bruno nod while continuing to chuckle. Well first off our great Pope Pexi has declared October 10th Saint Naruto Day. Bruno revealed, which did earn a smile on Giorno's face. Well that will slightly swell father's ego. What else do you have for me? A report from Naranika and Fugo. Bruno began, but his face sported a frown and his voice sounded less than pleased. And those two were in Kyoto right? Giorno asked, while Bruno nodded. Yes they were dealing with a local Yakuza per your order, well you made his say make the decision, but you know what I mean. Yes, but you sound troubled. Was there a mishap? I know Naranika and Fugo aren't the most stable pair, but I assumed they could handle the assignment with ease. Well you're correct on that front, as they were able to complete their assignment easily. Plus to my surprise they didn't cause any major problems while in Kyoto due to their recklessness. Well if they succeeded, what's the issue? They caught the attention of the Yakai faction and their leader Yusaka. So much so that a few members of her faction confronted both Narancia and Fugo. Oh for fuck's sake. Giorno mumbled in frustration while he started to massage his temples. Please tell me they didn't pick a fight with the Yakai faction. Surprisingly enough they didn't, but they were questioned as to why an unknown faction was making power moves within Yusaka's territory. Fugo taking the opportunity to establish a friendship between our groups, proposed a meeting between the boss and Yusaka. I take it that she accepted the offer? Yes, the meeting will be set for when the boss returns from the underworld. Nodding his head, Giorno wrote a small note on his desk. I'll try and send word to father and let him know of the situation. Until then just keep business as usual and keep expanding the passion. Taking a bow, Bruno quickly left the office, which left the blonde alone with Kuroka. Who lightly ran her finger across the man's rather well-defined chest. Who getting involved with Yasaka, I knew you would be interesting to stay around, but I never imagined this. I'm the son of the man who will untie every faction together in peace. You should heed well to remember that, as we are only getting started. Giving Giorno a rather lust-filled gaze, Kuroka softly dug his nails into the man's skin. Oh I'm liking you more and more Giorno. You'll make very strong kittens for me Naya. With Asia. Standing outside of the Phoenix estate, Asia looked through a rather large gate with a rather excited face. Yet her current company was in much different spirits, as Zenobia had her normal blank and uncaring experience. However, Rias and Akeno were both quite confused as to why they had been dragged to the Phoenix estate. So why are we here exactly? Rias asked. I'm curious as well. Akeno added. I wanted to do a little recon on Riser and his peerage. You know get some proper intel on the enemy. Well that and I'm awfully bored and want to cause some mischief. But Naruto. Watching from a distance with a pleased expression, Naruto merely folded his arms as his clones were busy training a sea of the Sei clones. You know, having this many of the little pervert running around is an eyesore. The voice of Kurama announced as he slowly stalked his way to Naruto's side. Hey there Kurama, haven't seen you all morning. Been hiding or something? Naruto asked with a friendly smile. Actually yes. I've been doing my best to avoid Asia. She's been getting rather bored these last few days, and you know how she gets when she is bored. Naruto sighed. Oh I know very well, but back to your comment about Issei. You should lighten up on the kid a little. He's making some solid progress. Considering his starting point, that doesn't say much. Oh don't be like that Kurama, Issei is making great progress. Hell, after this week is up I expect Issei to beat Riser and his peerage by himself. Well you have a way with idiots, but you're aware one of those devils is watching us. Naruto merely nodded. Yeah it's the small one Kaneko, she's been watching us all morning. You think the devils are having her spy on us? Naruto shook his head. It's a possibility, but if that were the case then Benelana would just follow me everywhere. No, she seems to only stick around when we are training. And that's interesting, are you curious to find out why she keeps watching? A little bit actually, care to monitor Issei while I go have a chat with her? Karama let a dangerous grin slip by. Can I torment the pervert? Naruto shrugged his shoulders. If it benefits his training, sure. But that being said, Naruto vanished in a blur of speed. Coming to a rapid stop right in front of the hiding spot that Kaneko was using to spy on Issei's training. An action that caught the girl by surprise and forced her to jump backwards in surprise. Naruto sensing the girl's emotions, quickly held his hands out to calm her down. Whoa easy there, I didn't mean to startle you. Naruto began with a soft laugh, while Kaneko watched him with a careful eye. Who said I was startled? Kaneko fired back in a monotone voice, while trying to keep her composure. I was just preparing to defend myself. 
oh I'm sure. Naruto replied as he rolled his eyes. And let me guess, next you're gonna say that you haven't been spying on me and to say. I dot dot uh. Kaneko trailed off as she didn't know what to say, which made Naruto give her a friendly smile. I will stop here, I hope did you enjoyed this video, if you did please leave a like that will be super duper awesome, and it was last part of this series, if you want more related to this series, then make sure to comment and subscribe. So thanks a lot for supporting this series. Take care, and if you want Sunday special movie, you can suggest me in comment section. Peace.